Hi guys, and welcome to another video. So as you can tell by the title of this video, I've been playing recently FIFA 22. Well, to be more precise, I've been playing FIFA 22, the beta, and that was kindly given to me, actually. The code for the beta was kindly given to me by one of you guys, a lad named Elliot on Instagram. He kindly offered, I didn't even ask for it, he just kindly offered the code for the beta, which of course I very um, gladly accepted, and I've been playing probably around five to six hours of FIFA 22. So of course, in this video, I cannot give you any screenshots or any gameplay of uh, the FIFA 22 beta because it's against the law and I could get in a lot of trouble. But basically, this video was just me essentially giving you my sort of brief thoughts on the gameplay itself and also the, uh, the creator club mode and the career mode as well, which I've also had access to. And then um, at the end of this video, I'm actually going to let you know what I'm going to be doing or starting with um, at the beginning of the FIFA 22 season, be it the Creator Club mode or the usual Sunderland Road to Glory. I know that I have done a poll on the community tab on the channel recently asking you guys which one you want and I'm very aware of where it stands at the moment but just hear me out and wait till the end and I will reveal sorry, what I'm, uh, what I'm going to do at the beginning of FIFA 22. So getting into the beta, originally all that I did have access to was the kickoff mode. So I did try and range the gameplay from you know teams that are five star to teams that are a lot lower because of course with Sunderland in general, you're usually playing with players that are around sort of mid 60s, maybe very, very early 70s, depending on who you've got on your team of course. So I wanted to try and get the gist of how the gameplay works. First of all, I was Sunderland and this is where I started to quickly notice that you know it's happened in many FIFAs before, but essentially, any player that is under the rating of sort of 75, 80, they're absolutely shocking. And what I mean by that um, is essentially, you know, they move like dump trucks. They move so slowly, they're so they're just not mobile at all. And the way they react to you wanting to turn, you know, they're very, very slow and they shift so slowly. The passing accuracy is terrible. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, you know, well, Joel, they're the lower rated players, so they're, they're going to be like that. But it's so overly exaggerated like the difference between you know an 80 rated player and a 70 rated player is absolute chalk and cheese and me imagine me trying to use Dan Neal who is currently 50 rated on the beta which is just his usual rating from last season because on the beta they use the same uh, ratings as last season because it's not been updated as of yet but you know they exaggerate how poor these players are so when i tried to play with for example a league two side in the kickoff mode literally just trying to string to pass together was nigh and impossible at times because their level of their ability is so overly exaggerated with how poor they're supposed to be i'm thinking in my head this is actually insulting because of course yeah league two it's a completely different class to Premier League, of course, I get that, but these are still professional footballers. But you know, the way they dribble, the ball is bouncing away from them constantly, uh, trying to string a pass together. You know, a five yard pass should be something within the arsenal of a League Two player, but it isn't. You know, it, it was that poor. You know, trying to turn, even if, if a player's got you know high acceleration, um, because they're rated so low, they just seem to move like, like, like they're stuck in the mud constantly, if that makes sense. And it made for really grindy and difficult gameplay, which is fine. I want it to be difficult. I understand that, you know, every player's first touch isn't going to be great if you're, you know, if your player's rated 60 odd or 50 in terms of Dan Neal. You know, your touch isn't going to be great. Your pass isn't going to be great. But my God, it's over-exaggerated. You know, you try and just tap a short pass with Dan Neal and he would absolutely drill it out of play or maybe exaggerate a little bit, but it'd just go nowhere near the play you've aimed for. And Again, I know they're trying to make it so it's not a predictable game, but some of it, it was so unbelievably frustrating. Now, don't get me wrong, as I'm going to move on to some more positives, that the higher the rating of the players, and yes, the gameplay does somewhat change, and just feel a lot more realistic, that of course, some players, they do get a bad touch here and there, or the passing is an inch perfect, which it does give it a bit of, a bit of that sort of unpredictability that we've wanted for so many years, because generally... You know, if you were to pass it to a player who's 10 yards out, you're always going to find him. You know, it's not going to be difficult, but sometimes it will bubble a little bit. It will be a slightly over hit, but it won't be as exaggerated or as insanely poor as lower league teams or lower league players, if that makes sense. So the gameplay, that's, it is a bit more realistic. And I do like that, and I do feel like the gameplay has slowed down a touch. But the big negative for me is the goalkeepers. I know they've said that they've completely redone the goalkeepers, and I've been playing on the Xbox Series X as well. And that's where I think goalkeepers are supposed to be mainly adjusted on the Series X, or at least the gameplay itself mostly has been touched up on the Series X. The goalkeepers are absolutely appalling, regardless of their rating. I absolutely mean that. 
Um, again, it does give that unpredictability, which I do like. I do like to see. But the amount of times I would hit a shot straight at the opposition goalkeeper, not too much power, and the goalkeeper would put his hands out like this, and it would just simply skim off the underside of his palm and go into the back of the net. It looked absolutely ridiculous. Now, sometimes it kind of worked in their favour. It did look quite good because, you know, in recent FIFAs, it was very predictable. You know, you get to a certain angle, you maybe you cut it from left to right, and you'd maybe hit a shot or you try and finesse it into the far corner. And you know full well that if you've hit it at a certain speed or a certain angle from a certain area, you know the keeper's going to get it. Um, you, you know you've made that mistake. You know what's going to happen every single time. You think, oh, shit, the keeper's going to hold this one. It's going to be easy. But it, it did give you that level of unpredictability. There were some times where you think, oh, the keeper's going to get this one easily. But then he might fumble it or he'll tip it around the post. You know, and he will make a mistake. So that is good that that unpredictability is there because then it opens new animations. It opens up for different scenarios. A keeper might parry it into, into places where you wouldn't usually expect him to parry it and he might be able to get the follow-up or it could cause a bit of chaos in the box with scrambles and stuff. And that did happen and that did make some games very, very exciting and I did like that. But I think they did go overboard with the goalkeepers. You know, I think it was very, very rare... And I'm not saying it would never happen because it did, but it was very, very rare for me to simply see a keeper catch the ball, even in the most like simple of circumstances. It was very, very rare. It was always parried or it would skid off them or the ball would simply bounce off them, regardless of the pace of the ball that's coming at them. It did look pretty shoddy at times, but it also made for some brilliant goals. It made some some really some different goals that you wouldn't usually see. You know, you'd try and hit it from a certain angle or a certain place where generally you might expect the keeper to make the save, but the ball might swerve, or it, the keeper, rather than just parrying it away as you'd expect or catch it as you'd expect in previous FIFAs, they might only just manage to get a tip on it and then it'd help it into the top corner and stuff like that. And it'd just make things look a little bit more realistic. But like I say, sometimes when you put no pace on the ball, straight to the keeper, is somehow powering it into his own net and it looks absolutely ridiculous. So in terms of getting play, yes, it's slowed down a bit. I feel like goalkeepers are poor. Um, but obviously, I'm guessing that, that will be touched up and tweaked a little bit. Of course, this is only the beta. I feel like players that are literally under the, you know, also maybe sort of League One, League Two players, they've been severely hard done by. It's very, very difficult to play in League One and Two. And I don't mean difficult just in, in terms of game difficulty. I, I've genuinely found it hard to play with those teams because it was just so horrible to play with. You need some decent players in there to be able to string a pass together. It got to that point, it was that bad. So now moving on anyway, away from the gameplay. I know it sounds like I've been very, very negative so far, but like I say, as soon as you got to the sort of Championship Premier League level, it was a very fun game because the, the goalkeepers, of course, they somewhat improved, uh, I guess, but there was still that unpredictability there, which I did like, and it all looked good. It looked visually very, very good. Um, and the gameplay itself, like I said, it was slowed down, which I like. I like a slower gameplay when it's too quick. It starts to make the game look a bit too arcadey for my liking. But like I say, I feel like the gameplay was very nice and, and unpredictable, which is good. But as soon as you hit the League One, League Two levels, then it, it was a, it was Joe. It was, sorry, it was a joke, and it was a, it was a very difficult game to play. I, I'm not going to lie. I, I really disliked playing with my own club because the gameplay uh, proved. Pretty goddamn horrible. So moving on to the modes, I did play uh, creator club mode and career mode as well. Now career mode, I'll just say it right now, it's absolutely untouched, it's unchanged. Um, very, very little has been tweaked at all within career mode. Um, little bits and pieces here and there, you know, which doesn't really bear to be mentioned really. Um, and cut scenes for you know, interviews and stuff have been ever so slightly extended, but um, to make it look a little bit better, I guess, but literally you get an extra sort of two or three seconds of cutscenes, which doesn't really mean too much. It makes it look a little bit better, I guess, but nothing massive or drastic has been changed within the career mode itself. But the big thing, of course, was creator club mode. So I went on to creator club mode and I created my team. I chose a team that was rated one and a half star. You can obviously choose if you want your team to be filled with, of course, all made up players and all regions and stuff like that. Uh, either one star, one and a half star, two star, two and a half star, three star, etc, etc. Now, I chose to put my team in League 2. I uh, gave myself a one and a half star team. And um, it, it, it looked really nice. I sorted out my kit, sorted out the stadium. You can use, you can sorry, you can choose your walkout music, stuff like that. What you do choose is a stadium that was already within the game. You know, you've got the sort of Ivy Lane and all those kind of fake ones. And then you can just simply adjust the colour of the 
uh, of the seats and you know the stadium netting and and the pitch how that looks that's what you can adjust you can't sort of add stands and create your own stadium as such but that's what we kind of knew and that's what we figured anyway and of course you create your own kit as well there was quite a decent variety of kits that you could go buy adidas nike umbro there was hummel kits as well there was only a couple which was a shame because but i did choose a hummel kit and it was actually all right it was pretty decent um, so that was, that was it's all very exciting when you when you're creating the squad and you're creating your club that bit is all very exciting I, I love customization so I spent a lot of time creating my club making it look perfect and everything and I was really really enjoying the aspect of it and I was excited to get it underway but then of course as soon as you started to create club mode it's immediately exactly the same as normal career mode which is again exactly what you expected but it just it did feel like a little bit of a it did feel like a bit of a anti-climax though after of course going everything through creating your club i thought there might be a big thing like an unveiling of the club type thing and it's not it's essentially just you going straight into a career mode but then that club has of course replaced another which you know i, I didn't expect too much but i don't know just something an unveiling or a, a cut scene of oh it's a brand new club that's been made you know i don't know something just make a fuss out of this club that you've just spent an hour customizing obviously you might not spend an hour but i did because i love customizing but um it, it was just it was just another career mode but of course just with your new club's badge just slapped on it essentially so first of all, like i say there's not too much for me to go off because it literally is the exact same career mode as last year but you've obviously got your own club in it which is fantastic but i did hit a pretty major glitch which i'm not gonna lie to you it kind of well it did it massively hampered my experience on the, the career mode or the creator club mode and what it was was essentially all these new players and of course they're all made up players that are thrown into your club the majority of them start off only on a 12 month contract which is a little bit annoying because you don't start off with a massive amount of funds of course you can decide how many funds how much sorry how much funds that you start with but i only gave myself a million or like 500k i can't remember exactly what it was so i wanted it to be somewhat realistic of me starting um, from fresh in league two so what had happened was half of my club or the majority of my club only had 12 months so i was spending all my money trying to re renew these um, contracts because otherwise from the end of the season I would have zero players at all because like I say a good 90% only had 12 months contract but what was actually happening was even though I was giving them new contracts and it was coming up on their bio saying that they are happy with the contracts they were still coming to me saying you've promised me a new contract why haven't I got it yet and then your manager rating would go down even though I have very clearly just given them a contract and it says that they're actually happy with it so what was happening was I was spending all this money on new contracts to keep players at the club. It said they were happy, but the game itself just wasn't registering that these players are happy. And it was still taking down my manager rating. So anyway, I just carried on playing, played through the career mode. League 2, I won the league, which is great. And I somehow come away with a manager rating of 55. Considering I just won the league, I think I only lost about four or five games. It was a really, really good season because I went with a young squad, so they did improve quite considerably. So half the team was sort of nearly at 70 rated come the end of the season, which was quite nice. So it, it, was, it was really good. I really enjoyed it. But like I say, the manager rating was 55. Yes, you have your objectives, but I set everything to being quite low on the priority board. So I didn't really have to fuss with that too much. And I was actually hitting 90% of the targets anyway, yet they were still very unhappy with me, which made no sense. So I went to League One, of course, after getting promoted. Uh, players still complaining about contracts, even though it says they are happy with the contracts and they have plenty of time on their contracts. So I played up to about February, the following February, in League One. Again, we were top of the league. Not by much, but we were top of the league. I think we'd lost a handful of games, but we were neck and neck with, um, I think it was uh, I think it was Ipswich, actually. I can't remember. But either way, it, it was looking really good. But what was worrying me is that manager rating was still rapidly going down. And before you knew it, it came to February, and I was sacked whilst being top of League One. Just got them promoted from League Two. And even though it said all my players were happy with contracts, I literally just had a list of the player chats that were coming through saying, you said that you were going to give me a new contract, but you're not giving it me. And then I was getting told off the board, like, if you're not going to give this person a new contract, then release them type thing or, or sell them onto a new club. And it was just absolute bollocks. Essentially, everything that I was trying to do for the players just wasn't getting registered. And is that a beta thing? I don't know. But what worries me is that we're going to go into this new FIFA 22 and this glitch will hit us early doors, particularly in a creative club mode, because like I say, the majority of the players only have a 12-month contract. And I think that that is what is confusing the game and has made it make such a mistake and such an error. And he eventually got sacked because of it. And it was because of their error. So that was my sort of 
time with Creator Club mode. And like I say, it makes it sound like I'm being so, so negative, but the actual customization, the creating of the club, I very, very much enjoyed. And I did actually enjoy the journey of getting from League 2 to League 1, even though, again, the gameplay wasn't great because the players and the rating of the players weren't great. But I did actually enjoy the struggle of getting through it. There were some very, very stressful times, some times where I nearly launched my pad at the... Uh, at the TV, but it didn't happen. Um, but, but I did enjoy the grind somewhat. Of course, I always enjoy the grind of a road to glory. But my worry again is that this road to glory isn't going. Sorry, this career mode, this creator club mode, it isn't going to be fixed. Come, you know, the uh, early access, which is when I want to start um, my career modes. So even though I have done a poll on the community tab, which as of right now, I do believe it's around 57% in favour of starting a career mode with the Creator Club mode, instead of doing the Road to Glory, the Sunderland Road to Glory that we usually do, I've actually opted to start with the Sunderland Road to Glory. So I do apologise to those who did want to see a Creator Club mode. I really, really want to start with a Creator Club mode, or at least I did. But I genuinely fear that we're going to run into that same issue because it is so close. I've only just finished playing the beta and the early access is on the 22nd or the 23rd of this month. I'm just terrified that we will start this big series, put loads of effort into it and it'll glitch out after half a season in League 1 after getting promoted up from League 2. And I don't want that to happen. So I would rather you know, go into our usual road to glory, do our usual thing and then maybe later down the line do a creator club mode. So that is what is going to happen. I do apologise again to those who did want to see creator club mode, but uh, I just feel like there's less risk with doing the Sunderland Road to Glory. And of course, to be fair, it's a main staple on the channel. It's something we do every single year, the Sunderland Road to Glory. So I'm really, really looking forward to it. So that is everything for this video, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. Again, I know it's been very, very negative, or in the most part it has been, but I feel like FIFA gameplay, there's only so far you can go with it, so I can only nitpick the negatives to warn you guys. So if you found this informative at least, then hit the like button for me. It'd be massively, massively appreciated. And subscribe to the channel if you're not already to become a fully-fledged member of the Sony Army. But for now, you take care and stay jabbed.